Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, on behalf of Alice and Mark and myself, we want to greet you in the wonderful, the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we do another one of our studies here in In Search of Christianity. And we're continuing on at our look at the evidence of a redeemed life. Because if you're going to search for Christianity, as I said, you ought to start right at home, right? Look in the mirror. In the mirror. Let a man examine himself, the Word of God says. So we're going to continue on. Last, last, in our last program, we started looking at peace, a lovely thing to have in your life. And we're going to continue on in that because we didn't finish up in our last program. Yeah. But before we do that, Mark is going to ask God's blessing on our time together. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for your word. And we also thank you for the fruit of the Spirit, which your work in us, they become apparent, Lord. And just... Let us appreciate those fruits more and more as we learn about them. Amen. Amen. And Father, I pray that you that nothing come out of my mouth that you haven't put in my heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right, as I said, we were we left off in the last program talking about peace. And by the way, all of these studies are available on on Bible Talk, BibleTalk.com, or uh, on our YouTube site. Thank you. Go look at them if you haven't seen them. I, I pray that they'd be a blessing to you. Okay, when we stopped last week, I, I just want to recap a couple of things. Because one of the things I was talking about, and I, I really think this is ever, ever so important, was the fact that the word peace itself comes from the Latin pacem, pax. And that came from the word, the Latin word for a pact. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So the source of peace is a pact. Now, in, in the world, in the natural, they look at peace, you know, if two, if two parties are having a conflict, and they come together and make a pact, an agreement between each other, that's called peace. The problem is the world doesn't have real peace, never has, and never will, not until the King of Kings returns, however. Well, if you make the agreement based on a lie, you're not going to have peace. Well, that's, that's not an agreement. I'm talking about you make an agreement... Obviously, we're talking about peace. Peace. Between the two parties. Okay? That's why I'm saying the world can't do it. The world doesn't have the ability to do it. The real reason is because everybody in the world is self-serving. And that, that is a downward spiral that becomes worse and worse. You know, Paul said to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, in the last days, the perilous last days, men will become, will be lovers of self. Well, they've always been lovers of self. Mm -hmm. So it has to be a matter of degree. So people will become more and more self-servant. Okay? If you love yourself, you serve the one you love. Right? So, the, the pact, by the way, in the, in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, in the Greek, it's used in the New Testament. The word that's used there has to do with the same, it's the same concept, right? It comes from the word to join. Okay. So when two Two parties, two people, two parties, two countries, when they join together in an agreement, mm -hmm. that brings about peace. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you're self-serving, you're always seeking to get the best of the deal. Right. And what happens is that that doesn't work. I mean, if, if that were the case, when Jesus Christ, on our behalf, made peace for us with God the Father, mm -hmm. there was no self-serving. He, the Lord of Lords, said he came not to be served, but to serve. Right. He gave himself completely and entirely. But it's all based on his word. That's the agreement, right? That a pact is a covenant. Yes. It's a covenant between two parties. The problem is that in the world, you know, I, I, I don't want to get distracted here, but when I was a young man, quite some time ago, it was a given. People did deals on a handshake. That's right. You know, because your word was your bond. You'd, you'd agree to something, you'd shake hands, and bada bing, bada boom, that was it. You wouldn't think about breaking it. No. Yeah. But that became, well, apparently a lot of people would. So what happened is it became more and more common that you didn't do anything unless it was based on a written contract. Right. Well, we live in an age today where written contracts don't seem to have any any power. There's no meaning Because people, all right. people constantly break or, you know, the contracts that they're involved in. Mm -hmm. 
A pact is a covenant. It's an agreement. God has made a covenant with us. And when you are saved, you have stepped in and accepted and agreed to that and become a part of that. And that's where peace comes from. So without, without that agreement based on a pact between two parties, between us and God, you'll never experience peace in your life. That's a, that's a simple fact. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted that gift of Jesus Christ from God the Father, you will never find true peace in your life. That's a simple truth. That's right. And you know what? Everybody's experience in the world bears out that truth. Yes. All right. So anyhow, when we left off last week, we were talking about, I, I used the example of when Jesus and the disciples were going across the Sea of Galilee. Yes. Remember where Jesus had been teaching? Mm -hmm. And he said, said to the disciples, we're going to the other side. Right. So they get in the boat, and as they're crossing, a storm arises. And you know, I'm sure you all know this account. So in, in Mark 4, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus is sleeping on board the boat in the midst of this terrible storm. And it must have been a terrible storm to scare the fishermen right. that were on board that boat, like, like Peter and like his brother Andrew, right, and others. Jesus was at perfect peace. Peace has to do also with rest. Right? When, you have, when you have true peace, you can rest. rest. Right. Otherwise, you know, you can't rest because you're always troubled. You lay down at night, are you troubled, or can you just go to sleep, or you, you have peace? Well, right? that's why there's so many drugs out there now for people to have a good night's sleep. They have to take pills. Drugs to take all kinds of things, right? right? That the, I, I promise you, you don't need antidepressants, you don't need sleeping pills if you have the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's what i got to say about that. So they went to Jesus and said, don't you care that we're perishing? They had to wake him up. They woke up and said, don't you care we're perishing? And I, I said this again, I said this last week, I'll say it again. That's prayer. Going to Jesus in conversation is prayer. That's an example of bad prayer. Because their prayer was a confession of their lack of faith. Yes. That's why we are called to give thanks in all things. Because we trust in the covenant that he has made with us. And as Paul wrote to, to the church in Rome, he said, we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So whatever is going on in your life, if you believe the agreement that God has made, the covenant, the pact that God has made with us, the word that He has spoken to us, that He watches over to perform, you have no reason to be troubled about anything. Absolutely. And once you can live an untroubled life, then you are free, instead of trying to figure out how you're going to get out of the mess, to start looking at how God can be glorified in the mess. Right. So that was one example, right? But there's also a similar account that, that is really worthy of our look, yes. and that's in Acts 27. Because in Acts 27, you know, the Apostle Paul has been arrested. He was in Caesarea Philippi, and he appealed to, to Caesar. So he's being taken as a prisoner to Rome to stand before Caesar. Mm -hmm. And along the way, this is Acts 27. You can go read all of this, right? What happens is that a storm arises. Not just any storm. This is a massive, massive killer storm that is tearing the ship apart. So, I mean, you know, there were, were 270 some odd people on board that ship, saints and sinners alike. Mm -hmm. And what happened was the storm arose and it, it was life threatening. So the, the sailors on board, they knew it was life-threatening. The Roman soldiers, I mean, they were, they were casting, they were, they were giving away all control over the ship. They were casting the cargo away. The, they gave up all hope. Now, that's not, a, that's not a sign of peace when you're just in despair. Okay, when you give up all hope, that's despair, which obviously is very, very common in our, in our world today mm -hmm. because it's a root cause of suicide. And suicide is a massive problem, not only here in the United States, it's a massive problem around the world. It is the ultimate, it is the pinnacle of giving, being hopeless, having no hope. But God has given us hope. Right? Go read Romans chapter 5, start at verse 5. That's your homework assignment, and find out about getting hope. So, as their despair increased and the panic increased among the sailors 
and the soldiers and the prisoners, everybody aboard gave up all their hope of being saved from the storm. Mm -hmm. All except for one. And that one was the Apostle Paul. Because it says in Acts 27, 14, the Lord sent an angel to Paul in the midst of this great storm to tell him that he would stand, he would stand before Caesar. And Paul listened and had a peace that passed understanding. And Paul said, now listen to this, please. Paul said, Acts 27, 25, saying he's speaking to the other people on board the ship, and he says, therefore, keep up your courage, men, for I believe, God, that it will turn out exactly as I have been told. Right. Now, you want to know the key to having perfect peace? Believing that it will turn out exactly as God said. Amen. When you believe the Word of God, you'll not be troubled. You'll not be anxious for anything. You'll not fear. You'll not panic. And if you know anything about Scriptures, you know that that's commands, not suggestions, not encouragement. Fear not. Fear not. Be anxious for nothing. This is the command of God. Why? Because that is an expression of our trust in His faithfulness and His love for us. Because He has made a covenant with us. Right. Okay? He will deliver us to the other side. And when He sees in our heart that we believe, then He equips us with the peace. Because we can't conjure up that kind of peace. We that can't. Is that is just straight from him. No. You, you, there's no way no. that you can fake that kind no, of peace or all. make it rise up in your that's own right. life. Except for believing the Word of God, yes. meditating on the Word of God, that's knowing right. the Word of God, because that is the covenant that God has made with us. Amen. And God watches over His Word to perform it. That's what He told Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1. So, in the midst of this whole storm with Paul, you see the evidence of a redeemed life. Right. The peace that is the fruit of the Holy Spirit in the life of Paul. And a light in the darkness of the storm that touched the lives of those around him. The light that God has put inside of you, you are, if you are saved, if you are the redeemed of the Lord, say so, if you are the redeemed of the Lord, I promise you, you are, Jesus said, the light of the world. Amen. And it, we're supposed to let our light shine in the darkness of this world because it gives hope. It's like a lighthouse yes, yes. in the midst of a storm. Others you know, will see it. Absolutely. And have hope. So the peace that Jesus gives, like I said earlier, is not because we're kept from the storm, but because we're calm and have confidence in the midst of the storm, right. believing that one way or another, we will reach the other side. That's right. That's what he said to the apostles. He had told them they were going to get to the other side. That's what he told Paul. You're going to get to Rome, right? And they, be Paul believed that, and that's why he had this perfect peace. Right. So, we're not exempt from the trials of life. Not at all. Getting saved doesn't, doesn't make you... You know, if you had a perfect life with no trials, no tribulations, no situations, you know what people would say about you? They'd say, oh, what a lucky guy that person is. Yeah. <laughs> No luck. Or it's easy to be a Christian. Well, no, they wouldn't, say, they wouldn't think anything about being a Christian. No. If you didn't have trials and tribulations in your life, people, I'm telling you the truth, people would say you're, you're being lucky. Right. When you have the trials and tribulations and people right. see that joy in your life, people see that love in your life, people see that peace in your life, see you know what they'll fruit. say? That's, that's God. Mm. And God will get the glory. So... Well, every, every test that we have in our lives is opportunity for a testimony in our lives. Amen. And all of, the, all of these things, this is why, why, does, why do you think Paul says that we exult in our tribulations? Why do you think James says in his letter that we consider all joy when we encounter various trials? Why do you think, you know, throughout the Word, this is what we're told? Because we have this confidence. And as I said, it's not a confidence, it, it, we connect to it by faith. But faith is comes from what you've heard from God. That's right. That's that pact. Because you know that his word will not fail. So your trusting in his your faith is in his faithfulness. Your trust is in his love for you. Go read Isaiah 43, where it talks about how you are precious in his sight. And he'll give others, I mean, he'll take care of you, he'll watch over you. 
because he loves us. But we're not exempt from the trials and tribulations of life. And unfortunately, that's a message that's not being preached broadly in the church. It's like if you become a Christian, oh, you know, everything's going to be fine. You're going to, everything's going to be fine. You're going to have peace, peace, when there is no peace. Because they're promising you a worldly peace when there is no peace. The people that preach that are worldly people, whether they're called Christian or otherwise, who are looking for and promoting the world's idea of peace, which is the absence of conflict, the absence of trial, the absence of tribulation. God does not promise you that. Right. It says in Psalm 34, 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. 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 Not some. Not some. All. God will deliver you. That's his promise. No promise that he has promised. I've quoted this a number of times last week. No promise that he has promised has failed to come to pass. God is faithful. Psalm 18, verses 2 and 3. I want to read those. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. Hallelujah. There it is. There it is. Oops, there it is. Can you say, can I say, like Paul did, I believe God, that it will turn out exactly as I have been told in the face of doctors who come and bring you bad news. Or auto mechanics who come and bring you bad news. Or lawyers or bankers or, you know, whatever, fill in the blank. In the face of all of that, people who bring you bad news, can you say, like Paul did, I believe God will make it turn out just exactly as he said it was. This piece that Jesus alone can give, that he speaks of in the Gospel of John, started with this. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe, you know, by the way, if you hear people use that bird, that part of the verse, yeah. let not your heart be troubled. That's a half a verse. That, and a half a verse can be a whole line. A half a truth can be a whole line. That's right. What Jesus said was, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. John 14, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. The peace that we have comes from the fact that we know the outcome. That's right. You know, I, I do, uh, I, I, I have preached around the world, I've preached a sermon that God gave me, because it, and it's, it's been a blessing, called The Attitude of the Righteous. And I talk about the fact that one of the things that God has given us, and we're going to talk about this more, mm -hmm. is perseverance. That's right. Press on. The ability to press on. The ability to long suffer. Right. The ability to have patience through the midst of it, waiting for Him mm -hmm. to deliver. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I talk about the fact that, it, and I, I always use the example of the old Star Trek television series. Yes. Now, even if you're not as old as I am, and most of you are not, you probably remember or know of the old Star Trek. I'm talking about the original Star Trek, Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock, Spock and Bones and Scotty. Shall I do it? No. Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Scotty. Captain, I cannot hold her together much longer. It's the dilithium crystals. They're shaking apart. Every week, we're like, it's always the dilithium crystals that are shaking apart and Scotty's in a panic. And meanwhile, the Klingons are off the port bow attacking them. Mm -hmm. Because if you're a Christian and you're living this life of faith, you know that when troubles come, they typically come in bunches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the, well, it was an hour-long program, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the hour, somehow the dilithium crystals have indeed held together. Mm -hmm. The Klingons have been dispatched. Mm -hmm. And the Starship Enterprise sails off into the stars to come back next week for another adventure. And I always say to people, why? why? And I mean, I, I literally, I've shared this around the world, and people look at me with a blank, with a blank look. Why? It's simple. It's in the script. That's why. 
And you have something far more sure than any script that's ever been written in Hollywood. The Word of God. We know how it ends. We know how it ends. That's why it says in Ecclesiastes, the end of a matter is better than its beginning. You know how it ends. Right. You know, Joseph may not have known it when his brother threw him down a well. When he got the ease, then sold off into Egypt, into slavery. Mm -hmm. And then he wound up in jail in Egypt. He may, but at the end, I'll tell you what he said. He said to his brothers, he said, yes. you meant this for evil, but God meant it for good. How many examples are there? Well, I can go through all kinds of examples, but I'll just give you one example that's really good. Lazarus. Oh, yeah. Now, you think you're having trials and tribulations? You think you have problems? Lazarus. Now, that's a problem. Four days dead. That's a, that's a problem. Okay? And yet, God showed up. Yes, he did. Because God always shows up. And he always shows up in time to suit his purpose. And his purpose is that he would be glorified and that we would be blessed. It doesn't matter where you are in a problem, in a situation, I promise you that if you will trust in God, if you will give thanks in all things, for that is indeed the will of God for you in Christ Jesus, if you will praise Him, if you will thank Him and praise Him, God will show up and He will deliver you. It will be for your good and for His glory. You know the outcome. If you have believed the word, if you have believed the covenant, if you have believed the pact that he has made with us, because he will not fail. Think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now they were threatened with a terrible death at the command of King Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. When he proclaimed, and this is in Daniel 3, I'm going to read verses 17 and 18. If that is the case, Remember, they wouldn't bow down before the statue right. that he had raised up of himself. And he said, if you don't bow down and worship the statue, you're going to get thrown into the furnace. But they said to him, if that's the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. Yes. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Mm. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. They were not sure of their fate, but they were sure of their God. That's right. Can you say that? I mean, you know, these, these accounts in Scripture, they're there for a reason. Whatever was written in earlier times, Paul says, were written for our instruction That's right. and encouragement. Can I, again, like Paul, can I say in the face of every storm, of every attack of the enemy, who desires our love to grow cold, and desires to steal our joy, and destroy our peace, can I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth for all the world to hear, that if God is for us, who can be against us? What shall separate us from the love of Christ? In all these things we overwhelmingly conquer. That's all from Romans chapter 8, his letter to the Romans, his letter to you. God speaking through Paul to you, to me, to Mark, to Alice. This is the thing. We are supposed to overwhelmingly conquer. Because you know what? How can you lose? It's like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because the work we're supposed to do is to believe. To believe. And when Jesus returns, he said, will he, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They weren't sure. They were not sure no, were. of what would happen at that fiery furnace. But they knew God they believed, God. they knew that God had the power to deliver them from that furnace. Right. And they said so. They confessed that. And they said, if he doesn't, so what? We'll go up, we'll go up to see him. We'll go up as a, we'll go up as a burnt offering. <laughs> we'll go up. Remember, present yourselves a living and holy sacrifice. That's, right. That's your service of worship. But they knew one way or the other, God would deliver them. Because it is. It's, it's about the score at the end of the game. That's right. It's about our destination, certain and sure, that will give us peace during the journey. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Think about that. You, you are not suffering trials and tribulations like the Apostle Paul did in that storm. God used him not only because he knew he would get delivered. Yes. 
That's why he said, I believe it's going to turn out, just like God said. But he was there to bless all of the others, 276, I think it was, who were on board the ship with him. He was there to bless them and encourage them. And people got saved. And when they, you know what? The ship got shipwrecked. Yes, it did. Go read Acts 27. Mm -hmm. But the people were delivered. Amen. The people were delivered. Of course, in the process, they had to cut loose the lifeboats. Mm -hmm. That's another story. Only him. Trust Be because him. you can't mm -hmm. trust in the things of the That's world. Right. They won't deliver you. The end of the matter is indeed better than its beginning. Hallelujah. The end of your matter is written. If you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, that gift from the Father for your eternal salvation. Amen. Because when you do that, He fills you. You become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And these things we're talking about now are the fruit of the Holy Spirit yes. who lives within you. The love that we've talked about, the joy that we've talked about, the peace that we are talking about. And knowing that when you're filled with the peace that's the fruit of the Holy Spirit, will be blessed with the patience that comes with true faith. Long stuff. Like Abraham had. As the testimony of the word proclaims of him. And so, having patiently waited, he obtained the promise. Hebrews 6.15 Thank you, Lord. Peace leads to patience. You know, I talked about this. I've been talking about it each week, and I will continue to do we finish this series on the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. These are like links in a chain. Yes. yes. Having that love of God within you, filled with that love of God in your heart, poured into your heart through the Holy Spirit, is what, what the Word says, right? That leads to joy. Yes. Because when, you're, when you are madly in love, <laughs> I promise you what? Joy. You're going to be filled with joy. And when you have that joy, you're going to have a perfect peace yes. because you know the one who loves you. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. And He loves you. He takes care of the things that He loves. He never fails. Never fails. So the love leads to the joy. The joy leads to the peace. And the peace will lead to patience. Because when you know, when you're convinced that it's going to turn out just like, you, you can wait. Yes. You're not, you're not there. Oh, make it happen now. Make it happen now. Because you know that God is going to make it happen. Time. In His time. That's right. He is a God of good order. He is not a God of confusion. Amen. And His timing will work out perfect mm -hmm. for you. Like I said, you know, it's, it's great. Abraham having patiently waited. He had to wait a long time to receive that promise, the promise of the child. Mm -hmm. All right? Paul, when he heard it, well, that, that didn't stop the storm. He had to continue to go through the storm. That's right. You may have you going through a trial now. God will deliver you from whatever yes. trial you're going through if you believe in Him, if yes. you trust in Him, if you confess Him as your Lord and Savior, Hallelujah. if you give Him thanks, if you praise Him. I promise you that not only will He deliver you from that situation, however He chooses, but He will be glorified by it. It will bring a testimony in your life. And it says in the, in the book of Revelation that the saints overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So, Father, we thank you for every trial and tribulation, everything that goes on in our life, Lord God, that you can use to bless us, and more importantly, Lord God, that you can use to glorify your name. We just praise you and thank you. Well, that went quick. Till next time, may the Lord bless you to peace. So I cherish not all rugged Till my trophies at last I lay down